This is David with TaxLayer Pro. In this video, we'll go over some of the 2015 tax law updates that we're going to see on our 2015 tax returns. First, let's talk about the 2015 Earned Income Tax Credit Income Limits, the maximum credit amounts, and tax law updates. First, the Earned Income and AGI Limits. This table represents the blue numbers in parentheses are the 2014 income limits and the numbers in red are the 2015 income limits. So for instance if you are single with no dependents for 2015 your earned income must be less than 14,820. If you're single or head of household with three or more dependents then your earned income has to be less than 47,747 for 2015. Dropping down to the married filing jointly area, 53,267 with three or more dependents on the 2015 return is now the earned income, or I'm sorry, the AGI limit for the earned income credit. The EITC investment income limit, still $3,400 or less for the year. Maximum earned income credit amounts, in other words, how much EIC is available for your client. The maximum amount of credit for tax year 2015, 6242 with three or more qualifying children. It was 6143 back in 2014, 5548 with two qualifying, $3,359 with one qualifying child, and 503 with no qualifying children, up from 496. For 2014. Personal exemptions. The personal exemption amount also goes up for 2015, a whole $50. Personal exemption for 2015 is 4000 up from $3950 in 2014. The adoption credit changes for 2015. The non-refundable credit allowed for an adoption of a child with special needs. Is 13,400 up from 13,190 for 2014, and the maximum credit for other adoptions is the amount of qualified adoption expenses up to 13,400. Foreign earned income exclusion for 2015. The foreign earned income exclusion finally hit six figures. It's now $100,800 up from 99,2 for 2014. AMT exemption amount for tax year 2015 is 53,600 for individuals and 83,400 for married couples filing jointly and the exemption amount is like a standard deduction for calculating the AMT that compares to 528 and 82,100 respectively for 2014 in past years the AMT was always subject to a last-minute scramble by Congress to patch the exemption. But as part of the American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012, or the ATRA, the AMT is now permanently adjusted for inflation. No more patches. The limit on annual contributions to an IRA, individual retirement account, remains unchanged at $5,500. The additional catch-up contribution limit for individuals aged 50 and over remains at $1,000. The IRS now recognizes legal same-sex marriages. The U.S. Department of the Treasury and the IRS recently ruled that same-sex couples legally married in jurisdictions that recognize their marriages will be treated as married for federal tax purposes. Under this ruling, same-sex couples will be treated as married for all federal tax purposes where marriage is a factor, including filing status, claiming personal and dependency exemptions, taking the standard deduction, employee benefits, contributing to an IRA, and claiming the earned income tax credit or the child tax credit. Now there's been some hacking going on, some unauthorized access of taxpayer transcripts. 
following this hacking incident involving the IRS's Get Transcript web application, which was discovered back in May, the IRS conducted an extensive review to assess whether other suspicious activity had occurred. The IRS identified more questionable attempts to obtain transcripts using sensitive information, and as a result, the IRS is moving immediately to notify and help protect these taxpayers. What are they doing? Well, the IRS will begin mailing letters in the next few days to about 220,000 taxpayers whose Get Transcript account information was potentially accessed by unauthorized parties. And as an additional protective step, the IRS will mail letters to another 170,000 households alerting them that their personal information could also be at risk, even though identity thieves failed in efforts to access the IRS system. The IRS is taking a wide variety of actions to protect taxpayers beyond the mailings, including offering taxpayers free credit protection as well as identity protection pins. And at the date of this video, the Get Transcript service remains unavailable. Moving on to the Affordable Care Act. Now, if you can afford health insurance but choose not to buy it, you must have a health coverage exemption or pay a fee. I'm sure we're all familiar with this. The fee is sometimes called the penalty, a fine, individual responsibility payment, or the individual mandate. The fee for not having coverage in 2015, if you don't have coverage in 2015, you'll pay the higher of these two amounts, 2% 2 of your yearly household income. Only the amount of income above the tax filing threshold, about $10,150 for an individual, is used to calculate the penalty. The maximum penalty is the national average premium for a bronze plan. This year of 2015, remember last year it was $95 per person. This year jumps up to $325 per person for the year. $162.50 per child under 18 and the maximum penalty per family using this method is $975. How do you pay the fee? You'll pay the fee on the federal income tax return that you file for the year you don't have coverage. Most people will file their 2015 returns in early 2016. Well, what happens if you don't pay the fee? The IRS will hold back the amount of the fee from any future tax refunds. There are no liens, levies, or criminal penalties written into the Affordable Care Act laws for failing to pay the fee. Moving on with the Affordable Care Act, the employer mandate employer penalty was delayed until 2015-2016 and now the Obamacare employer mandate employer penalty originally set to begin in 2014 again as we said was delayed until 2015-2016 Obamacare's employer mandate is a requirement that all businesses with 50 or more full-time equivalent employees or FTEs provide health insurance to at least 95 percent of their full-time employees and dependents up to age 26 or pay a fee by 2016. Well, how does the employer mandate work? Well, firms with 100 or more FTEs, full-time equivalent employees, will need to insure at least 70% of their full-time workers by 2015 and 95% by 2016. Small businesses with 50 to 99 full-time equivalent employees will need to start insuring full-time workers by 2016. This mandate does not apply to employers with 49 or fewer full-time equivalent employees. Employers must offer coverage, but employees don't have to take it. They can't get marketplace subsidies if coverage meets affordability and minimum value guidelines. And since the employee was offered qualifying coverage, the employer doesn't owe the fee. Employees who work at least 30 hours per week or whose service hours equal at least 130 hours a month for more than 120 days in a year are considered full-time. The annual fee? $2,000 per employee if insurance isn't offered at all. If at least one full-time employee 
receives a premium tax credit due to coverage either being unaffordable or failing to provide minimum value, the employer must pay the lesser of $3,000 for each of those employees receiving a credit or $2,000 for each of their full-time employees minus the first 30 employees. Now here's the 1095A. I'm sure we all became familiar with this last year. Here's the 2015 version of the 1095A. And like last year, taxpayers will need the 1095A form to file for the premium tax credit, the 8962. 1095A is the health insurance marketplace statement. The 1095B requirement this year, taxpayers are going to need the 1095B form to report and verify on the tax return that the tax family had qualifying health coverage. This form, the 1095B, basically proof that the tax family had the type of coverage which is required by the Affordable Care Act. The 1095C the employer provided health insurance offer and coverage. The ACA requires certain employers to offer health insurance coverage to full-time employees. We just spoke about that a moment ago and their dependents. These employers must send an annual statement, the Form 1095C, to all employees who are eligible for coverage. This statement describes the insurance available to them. Well, who has to file this Form 1095-C? Well, the Affordable Care Act defines those employers who must offer health insurance to their employees, and the law refers to them as applicable large employers or ALEs. A company is an ALE if it has at least 50 full-time workers, and a full-time worker, according to the ACA law, is someone who works at least 30 hours per week. What's the relationship between the 1095C and the 1095B? Well, the 1095C describes the coverage made available to an employee, where the 1095B provides details about an employee's actual coverage, including who in the worker's family was covered. 1095B is sent out by the insurance provider rather than the employer. Sending out 1095C forms became mandatory starting with the 2015 tax year. Employers must send the forms to their eligible employees and also to the IRS. Employees are supposed to receive them by the end of January, so forms for 2015 will be sent in January 2016.